Welcome to Proven's Garage. So from the last video, we were having a little bit of issue with the reverse Ackerman steering that we got going on on the front here. And so I've got a couple ideas of how I'm going to fix that. The first idea, which I think is probably the simplest idea, is to just take these uh, spindles, reverse sides, so that will put our attachment point in the back, and then make a little lever. It connects from here on the steering rack back to the tie rod that would be moved back here and it'll just have a little pivot point in the middle. That way I don't need to change anything else about the steering, but it'll move my tie rods to the back and hopefully correct the problem. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit and uh, see what happens with that. And so uh, hang tight, we'll see how it goes. Well, I'll tell you what, boys and girls. I got super lucky and didn't really have to modify a whole lot at all. I was able to remove all the bump steer and fix the steering. So check this out. So this is just temporary right now, but basically what I did, I turned the steering rack 180 degrees so that when I flip my spindles around, and move the connection point from my tie rods to the back side, I'd be steering in the same direction and it would steer the tires in the same direction. But what I did here is just mopped it up with a just a piece of threaded rod and some nuts to space my tie rods back far enough that they're not gonna hit the shock. And I made sure my spacing was correct from the tie rod compared to where the heim joints sit on the A-arms. And I even tried to get it as close as I could with the tie rods being level with the A-arms. So once I did that, bump steer, I mean, that is, I would call that almost 100% eliminated. And it's kind of hard to see, so I'll try to show you the best I can. But it now has Ackerman steering instead of reverse Ackerman steering. So I turn all the way to the right. My inside tire turns further than the outside tire. But before, we were way harder on the outside tire. And now we are at least further in on the inside tire of the turning radius. So even if it's not perfect, it is way better than it was before. So I'm gonna make some little spacers. Uh, to go in here in between the tie rod and the steering rack just so it's nice and solid and uh, we're going to try it out because I can just about guarantee it's going to be worlds better. So let me get this buttoned up and we'll get back at it. Alright so the steering appears to be fixed. I made some little spacers to go in here to strengthen this up on both sides and it appears to be working. I need to uh, reroute these brake lines because they're kind of just flopping around. But another shakedown should be coming pretty pretty soon. So the only other thing that I want to look into and address is right now what I think might be happening is I have a chain tensioner on the one side but nothing on the other and this side is has no attachment point except for on the top and even though that's a pretty firm attachment same thing on both sides even though it's a pretty firm attachment I think that this whole axle box might be torquing when I try to turn the wheels and take off and so I think that might have been my problem or what was causing that skip in the chain you know this thing just twisting a little bit and it skips off probably the front sprocket so what I'm going to do is make the same thing here, or same thing as here for the other side, 
and hopefully that should stiffen it up and then we'll see what happens. I've gone ahead and made the same brackets as the, I have for the other side and so basically this will weld on to my little axle box and then this side here with the heim joint will weld on to that back tube of the frame and since the axle box needs to pivot on those top bolts this whole setup will basically eliminate any chance of binding so it's the same thing I have on the other side I'm gonna go get this mounted up and then I think we're gonna be ready to take it for a shakedown got the other chain tensioner installed on the other side everything's tightened up had to bleed the brakes again but I think it's time for another test trip Shakedown number two went so well. The new steering, seriously, is a million times better. It's not dragging the front wheels at all when I turn. And just that little fix on the rear axle box totally eliminated that skipping of the chain. If you saw in the last episode, I'll show that. And so that's totally gone. And that was mainly happening when I would try to take off and turn at the same time that the axle box was just kind of twisting and simply putting another tensioner on the other side totally fixed that. So I was going to do a second part of the shakedown by taking it in the dirt somewhere and just ripping on it and see how it performed. But I live in coastal Florida and after taking this outside one time, it was already starting to surface rust all over this thing. So I made the executive decision to do the roll cage and paint this thing because it was way too much work to have it rusting already. So I'm gonna pump the brakes on my impatience and finish up the roll cage. I got the tubing for it and we're gonna get it painted and then we're gonna go out and just rip on it. So I'd do that in this episode, but then this episode would be uh, like three hours long. So we're gonna end this one off here. Next time, roll cage, paint, finishing up some other stuff, and then totally giving it the beans. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Make sure you stop in next time. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll see you next time on Rogan's Garage.